notice is functions and their properties. Okay? Functions and their properties, we're looking at graphs. We're looking at tons of different properties. I mean, today we're starting with domain and range. We're starting with some of the same stuff you guys started with at the beginning of the year in Algebra 2 last year. Okay, all different features of graphs. For today, though, we're talking about how to know if something is a function, domain, and range. We'll go into other stuff in part two. So, a little bit of definition here. Function. A function from a set D to a set R is a rule that assigns each element in D to a unique element in R. Where D and R stand for domain and range. Okay, so if we go back to probably middle school days, when you guys first learned to decide if something is a function or not, every element in the domain has one corresponding element in the range. Okay, and so that's what it's talking about there. It assigns each element in D to a unique element in R. You may have learned it as domain values cannot repeat. That may sound familiar. I'm going to write that on here because I forgot to type it on here. So domain values cannot repeat. So that is another way to decide, okay, is something or isn't it a function? Domain values cannot repeat. They have to be unique. Um, domain, the set of all input values. Or in other words, it is our x values. Range, the set of all Output values, or in other words, the y's. That's old news. Um, to decide if something's a function. Easiest way to decide if something's a function? You guys remember the vertical line test? It's an easy one. Vertical line test, you draw a vertical line through a graph. It can only touch the graph at one spot. If you draw a vertical line through a graph and it crosses the graph more than once, then it fails the vertical line test. So notice there, a vertical line can only cross the function in one place. Otherwise, it fails the vertical line test. But that's a really easy way, if you have a graph, to be look at the graph and go, oh, passes or fails the vertical line test. Okay. So we're going to talk on example one and two. We're going to talk about functions. Real quick, a little bit about domains, and then we'll... Use that starting in example three. Um, when we talk about domain, first of all, all polynomials have infinite, infinite domains. When I talk about polynomials, I'm talking about graph equations that are just like your x terms, add in, subtract it up. It's like x squared plus 2x minus 3. That's a polynomial. Anything that has x's with whole positive exponents are polynomials. But those have infinite domains. They go infinitely left and infinitely right. Um, we'll look at the fact that denominators cannot equal zero. So if a denominator equals zero, it makes the graph not exist at that point. And that's where we'll talk about asymptotes and holes. The inside of a square root must always be greater than or equal to zero. What's greater than or equal to zero? Fancy talk for Positive. positive, yeah. If something is greater than or equal to zero, it's saying it is positive. So the inside of a square root must always be positive. Okay? And then when all else fails to find the domain of a function, we'll look at the graph and we can read it from left to right. I taught this in Algebra 2 where it's kind of starting on the left. Okay, where does the graph start? Where does it break? Where does it restart? We'll look at those pieces, okay? Example one, basic here. Is y equals x squared a function? Yes. You can take this any way you want it. Yes, why yes? Because There's several different reasons you can get here, so that's why I'm, what was your reasoning? Uh, infinite domains. Okay, so looking at the fact that a polynomial has infinite domains, okay. So never equals zero, squared will always be positive. Right.
true, but that's I'm going to save that stuff more for when we talk about domain. Okay, we'll save that stuff more when we talk about domain. Trying to prove or reassure that this is a function. I agree it's a function. But the question becomes is what is our reasoning for why it's a function? As I said, there's not just one way to show this. What would the vertical line test say? Yeah. Yeah, because why? Okay, because what is the graph of y equals x squared? It's a parabola, yes? I expect us to know this at this level, that y equals x squared is a parabola. Officially, it's a parabola 0, 0. Honestly, I don't care what parabola you think it is. It's a parabola. Does that pass the vertical line test? Right there, it passes the vertical line test. Over here, any vertical line I draw, is it just going to cross once? Yeah. Doesn't matter how many vertical lines I draw, they each cross once. So that means it's going to pass the vertical line test. So that's one reason to say, yes, it is a function. I also kind of referred to, and I don't know if you guys still see it in middle school math or not, but when I taught middle school math, you saw it where they'd give you a list of ordered pairs and you'd have to decide if it's a function. Maybe see an algebra one. I don't know. But think about some ordered pairs here. If I put zero into this, what's my ordered pair? Zero, zero. What if we put one in? One comma, one. What about two? Two squared is four. What about negative one? Negative one squared is one. And what about negative two? Negative two squared is four. Think about as you're plugging numbers in. Each x value, you plug it in. Can you get more than one y value for it? No, we plug we plug in one. It just says square. You're going to get one answer. You plug in two. You square it, you get one answer. So as in, do my x values ever repeat? No, each x value is going to just be matched with one y value. Now, did we have a few y values repeat? Yeah. We do, but that's okay. Okay, that would fail the horizontal line test, but we're not talking about a horizontal line test here. We're talking about a vertical line test. Okay, so whichever way you want to think about this, ultimately the response is yes, this is a function. Okay. Um, when it talked earlier about finding the domain of a function, all polynomials have infinite domains. This is a polynomial. So right there, the fact that it's a polynomial classifies it as a function. Okay. Have you looked at example two yet? Example two is asking which of the following is not a function? Which of the following is not a function? Last one? Because what happens? To the right line. Yeah, I draw the right the right line here, and it's going to pass through in not even just two spots, but three spots. Does it matter if I could if it would pass the vertical line test over there? Does that matter? No. The fact that I drew the vertical line there and it fails says it is not a function. Do the other two pass the vertical line test? Yeah. Wherever I draw. It crosses through in one place, doesn't it? Same thing on my zigzag here. Wherever I draw, it crosses through in one place. It doesn't matter. So it is example three. And I'm going to say here that it fails the vertical line test. 
you need an answer for yourself, Thales vertical line test. Okay. Okay. That's just a brief little bit about functions, knowing if something is or is not a function. Ready to talk domain? Okay. Find the domain of each of these functions. And it is f of x equals the square root of x plus 3. Okay. We will eventually look at the graph. But I don't want the graph to be our go-to thing. I want the graph to kind of be the last thing we do to kind of check our answer. As we think about this, go up to those four things listed up above. Okay? Um, it said, number one, all polynomials have infinite domains. This is not a polynomial because there's a square root. It has to just be x to whole number of powers. This is not a polynomial. So that one doesn't apply. Denominators can never equal zero. Do I have a denominator here? No, no denominator, so that rule's irrelevant. The inside of a square root must always be greater than or equal to zero. Do I have that situation? Yeah, okay. When we're talking about whether or not this is a function, folks, we're talking real numbers here. We're talking graphs and everything. We're not talking about the imaginaries. So we need whatever's under this radical to be positive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take whatever's under the radical and make it, or make an inequality that sets it greater than or equal to zero. This will be one of the first big things. When you see something under a radical, make it greater than or equal to zero. Can you solve this? Yeah. If it's plus three, officially we're going to subtract three, and so you end up with x greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay. So based on the rules we know right now, I'm going to claim that my domain is x greater than or equal to negative 3. So it's all x values bigger than negative 3. Now, the fourth thing listed up above is to read the graph from left to right. As in, okay, let's take a moment. Let's peek at the graph and see if this makes sense. So if you will, please, graph the equation. Now, when I say graph the equation, what equation am I talking about graphing? Yeah, graph y equals the square root of x plus 3 and see what that looks like. So graph the original equation here. Now, if you're like me, I have to clear the equation. I'm also going to go up here. Remember the easy way to turn stat plots off? I can just go up here on my y equals screen and turn that plot off right there. Okay, did you graph it? Square root of x plus 3. I'm also going to do a zoom 6 because... Uh, who knows what my last settings were? Does your graph look like my graph? Uh, Eventually, maybe. Yes, I graphed it. Okay. Now, what do you notice about this graph? If we're talking about reading this from left to right, as I think about reading this, where does it begin? Negative 3. Negative 3, yes. Now, is it about negative 3 or is it exactly negative 3? About negative 3. Exactly. Technically, it's exactly. Uh, now, you look at it, you okay, and here's wrong. the deal. Wrong. This is where we have to account for calculator failure. Okay. 
the calculator is going to make you think it's about negative 3. But we have to be smarter than the calculator. So one thing you can do, have you tried tracing? If I hit trace and I start arrowing left, notice when I get over there, at negative 3.03, I have no y value. So that means my graph does not exist at negative 3.03. .03. If I back up one, at negative 2.87, I have a very small y value. So that means my graph exists at negative 2.87. So my graph exists at negative 2.87. It doesn't exist at negative 3.03. .03. Somewhere in between there, it comes to a stop. Where is that somewhere in between there? It's the 3. And your hint is this 3 in the original equation. So it does actually go to 3. Um, what's that shape? Half of a sideways parabola. Which, it's a square root, which is the inverse of x squared. Okay, so it is halfway of half of a sideways parabola. So realizing here... You have to be smarter than the calculator because if you put negative 2.87 as your starting point, you're not going to get full credit for me because this is where I need us to take the equation into account. Now, answer is an interval notation. Well, yes, we said x squared there equal negative 3, and that's a good answer. What's interval notation? My graph starts at negative 3. Yes, as I read left to right, my graph starts at negative 3, and then it goes on towards negative infinity. Excuse me, positive infinity. Infinities always use parentheses. What's a negative 3 use? It is a bracket because it does touch negative 3. And you can confirm that by plugging negative 3 into your equation. Can you plug negative 3 into your equation? Yes. Yeah, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. Um, another thing, when you are in trace, like right now I'm in trace, yes? If you type in an x value, it will pop up the ordered pair for you. So if I want to know, does negative 3 exist? If I just type in negative 3, notice it appears right there and hit enter. Notice it takes me to the point negative 3, comma, 0. That's telling me it does exist. If I were to trace and type in negative 3.1, it's telling me it doesn't exist. So you could try some things like that as well that might help give you some ideas. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make a comment here in case you want to put it in yours. Read x values from left to right. Okay. Okay. As much as I would like to continue on. I mean, they fall into that annoying place where we get caught in the middle of example B. So, we'll stop here. We'll pick up tomorrow. We'll talk more about domain, and we'll talk about range. And, I don't know, I want to think you'll have some more time, but as soon as I say that, it won't happen. So.